finding a research gap. It's like discovering the last available sun lounger by the pool in peak holiday season. It's rare, it's golden, and when you find it, you claim it with everything you've got. Probably by throwing your metaphorical towel on it before anyone else does. But let's be real, the process of getting there, the process of finding a research gap, is not that simple. You don't just stumble across it. You might even think you've found a research gap because it appears that nobody is using this particular sun lounger, but then it turns out that they are. And you've got to move on. You've got to take your stuff and find another one. Or you think you found a research gap. You found it, you claimed it, you've got it all to yourself, but you fall out of love with it quite quickly. Maybe it's in the metaphorically shady part of the pool area that the sun never gets to. It's the one that's a bit dodgy, it's the one with a broken wheel or the one that you can't adjust or it's stuck in a particular position. So finding your research gap, finding your sun lounger or the one is a lot messier than many people make it out to be. And I think we need to be honest about that from the start because I think it does make you feel a bit better if you've got into a bit of a mess trying to find a research gap. That's fine, it's normal, it's supposed to be messy, it is not supposed to be straightforward. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to navigate the whole research gap thing. If we've not met before, hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Yardley, and I help PhD students get out of their own way and finish their doctorate. Finding a research gap is a massively important part of the PhD journey. It's where your original, unique contribution to knowledge is going to sit, so let's get into it. First up, a little bit more on what a research gap is. A research gap is like a missing piece of a puzzle. It's something in the existing body of knowledge that hasn't been explored, explained or resolved. But here's the thing. It doesn't have to be something massive or groundbreaking or completely new. A gap can be a new context, a different method, a question that hasn't been asked or answered yet. So you could be looking at the same thing that a whole load of other researchers have looked at, but you are going in with a different approach. Your questions, your perspective, your angle on this topic, that's unique. So the research gap is where you can add to that knowledge, where you can make a contribution to make things clearer. So why are good research gaps hard to find? Finding a research gap can feel impossible. You're reading paper after paper, book after book, and you're like, they've covered everything. These people have researched everything that is to research on this. And when you're focusing on what's already there, it's very difficult to think about what's not there. But you've got to remember, no one has studied everything, okay? There are gaps. Academia is full of uncharted territory. There are areas that people just haven't got to yet. Areas that other researchers might not even be aware exist. Sometimes the trick isn't to look for something that's never been done, something completely novel and new. It's to find a distinct angle, a fresh perspective, a way to build on what's already out there. And sometimes it's about scanning the horizon and anticipating things that are coming down the road. So these might be things that other researchers haven't anticipated yet. It might be things that are going to have an impact in a few months time, a few years time, but they are things that your discipline needs to be looking at. And as a new researcher who hasn't spent years and years within a particular field, that fresh perspective that you bring can often be an advantage here when it comes to identifying a research gap. So how do you find a research gap? The first thing to do is to figure out what lights your fire. Seriously, what do you actually care about? You're going to be living with this topic for literal years. So you want to make sure that your metaphorical sun lounger is a good one, okay? You don't want it to be that sun lounger in the part of the pool where the sun never gets to. And you've got to be really careful here in terms of research gaps that other people have identified for you, that other people have said, hey, why don't you study this? Why don't you study that? Sometimes there are reasons why other researchers haven't studied those particular things. So be a little bit cautious if somebody is trying to push you towards a particular area. It's gotta be one that you're excited about. It's gotta be one that you've got a stake in, not one that you're just grabbing onto because someone else has told you that it's, it's a gap that's there and you can fill it. So ask yourself these questions. What fascinates me about this field? 
What problems do I want to solve? What questions keep popping into my head? For example, if you're in the education field, what is it about education that really floats your boat? Are you interested in students, in teachers, in the system itself, in policy around education? If you're interested in small businesses, what is it about small businesses that you would happily spend years researching? How they start, how they keep going, how they expand. A particular type of small business, like independent coffee shops, for example. Specificity is your best friend. The more you niche down, the better. Becoming more focused will reveal more opportunities for you. It really will. Because if you're looking at some big, huge, hulking topic like small businesses or education, it does become really difficult to visualise what you could do a PhD on. But when you drill down into the specifics and you're picking out particular elements of that or particular angles on it, that's when things start to emerge. That's when opportunities start to arise. Get into the comments on this one. What area are you interested in? What have you narrowed it down to? Where are you getting stuck when it comes to this? Seriously, get typing. Let's help each other out. Let's throw some ideas around. The next thing you need to do is dive into the literature. Yeah, I know, I know. It's what everybody tells you to do and it is the last thing that you want to do because the literature just feels so huge and vast and, and all-encompassing. But this is where you will start to see those patterns and those gaps and those opportunities. Here's how to tackle it. Firstly, start broad. So begin with review articles or foundational texts in your field with meta-analyses, that kind of thing. These will give you an overview of what's already been done. Then narrow down. So as you read, pay attention to areas where people are writing things like further research is needed or this remains unexplored. Those are really valuable clues. Those are gold. And don't forget to take notes. So create a system to track your key ideas, your gaps and questions that are arising. And a really important thing to remember is don't try and read everything. Focus on the most relevant studies. And as you're reading, start asking yourself questions like these. What's missing here? Could this be studied in a different way? What's changed since this study was published? For example, if you come across a study about law firms, but it's only looking at big city law firms, you could ask, what about small independent law firms? Or if a study has used surveys to collect the data, you might think to yourself, OK, what if I was to use interviews to collect data on this topic? What new things might that reveal? Remember, your gap does not have to be earth shattering, groundbreaking or anything like that. It just has to add something meaningful to the conversation. Now it's time to find the sweet spot. And this lies at the intersection between what excites you, what's underexplored and what's feasible. Because let's be honest, some gaps are just too big to tackle in one PhD. Your research needs to be doable with the time and the resources that you've got. For example, if you're exploring career change amongst people in their mid thirties, it might sound really exciting to compare experiences across five countries. But unless you have an unlimited budget, fluency in multiple languages and an army of research assistants, that's not going to be possible. Instead, narrow it down. You might choose to focus on career change in one country or in one particular region or one specific profession. The more specific your focus, the more manageable and the more meaningful and impactful your research is going to be. It's better to have a focused and a feasible study that you can actually complete then to get halfway through one, which is just too much and too big and find yourself burning out. Next up, test that idea. Once you think you've found your gap, test it out. Talk to your supervisor about it. Talk to colleagues and peers about it. Say something like, I'm thinking about doing my research on this. What are your thoughts? Popping up on your screen right now is another video I think you'll enjoy if you found this one useful. It's all about how to write fantastic research questions. And this is the next logical step after you've identified your research gap. So go and check it out, I'll see you in there.